Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation of Putnam County League Soccer on WOSN. Today, Audeville, undefeated on the season, playing host to PCO rival Continental. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Josh Crossgrove as we get set for all the play-by-play -play and color commentary of this game. A beautiful night for soccer. Feels a little fall-like here in mid-September. Nice little breeze, some clouds, and we're ready to get this game going. It is soccer weather here in Ottaville, Ohio. And, uh, Doug, this has been a battle uh, for the last three, four years going back and forth. Um, you know, the year the Continental went to regionals, um, Ottaville bested them here 2-1. Uh, last year up at Continental, um, Continental got the best of them 3-1. And... Likewise, last year, Ottaville made a tournament run um, all the way to regional finals. Uh, so this has been a battle going back and forth. Well, since, you know, let, let's face it, um, I have a senior on this team. He's injured, not <laughs> playing. But clear back to when I coached starting in the third grade, these teams, um, you know, clear back to the Grant Lease and, you know, all the way back then, these teams were battling for the past eight years, they nine know years, each other well. they do know each other well. The coaches know each other well. Um, neither one of them are going to hide anything. They know what they're going to be here tonight. It's just going to be an old-fashioned soccer match here, you know, 70 degrees on September 13th. It's great weather. Um, like you said, it's a little fallish. Yeah. It's it's nice. Um, and come this weekend, it's going to be 75, <laughs> 80. Yeah. So it's going to be warm. So. It feels a little bit more like when the games start to really count in October today. But Audeville's been playing like they all count for sure. 7-0 yes, on the season, haven't allowed a goal on the year. That's one thing, but you look at the competition they played, the two that really stand out, they've got that 3-0 win over Liberty Benton. That's actually their closest game of the season on an up-and-coming Eagle squad there. Uh, and Bluffton, uh, a victory of them, 6 to nothing. Bluffton, of course, has been very strong the last several years as well. Those are noteworthy games to not allow goals in uh, with the weaponry that's involved in those contests. Exactly. And they, they do have one common opponent, um, Lima Bath. Uh, they beat Ottaville 6-0 six, six against Lima Bath. Continental opened the season. Um, I guess it was the second game of the year, 4 nothing against Lima Bath. So, like you said, Ottaville hasn't given up a goal, um, and Continental is 0-1 in the league. Uh, lost uh, Friday the uh, 2nd um, to Miller City 1-0. At, uh, at home, um, gave up a goal within the first 10 minutes. So I know that Coach Stegbauer and um, the senior Pirates are uh, wanting to put on a great show and, and get back to even here in the league. And I'm sure Ottaville is wanting to start off their league 1-0 as well. Absolutely. Should be a good one. We'll have all of the action coming up right after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottaville, where we get set for today's Putnam County League showdown. The Big Green undefeated at 7-0, playing hosted to the Continental Pirates 4-2-1, or excuse me, 4-2, 1-1 uh, in the PCL. The Pirates coached by Brian Stock by Stackbauer and Ottaville coached by Dustin Mark Ward as we get set for today's contest. Doug Jenkins joined by Josh Crossgrove for all of the action. What do you expect to see early in this one, Josh? You're going to look for pressure on both sides. Ottaville's got the kickoff. You're going to look for a fast start. Uh, one thing, Doug, that uh, I see right off the bat, two seniors versus six seniors for Ottaville. So that's going to be huge experience-wise because Continental is young, so they start some freshmen. So in this big game, it's going to be um, – Coach Stegbauer is going to want to get these freshmen on the field and some confidence early. Coach Stegbauer mentioned in the uh, pregame keys that his young players are going to have to uh, really show up for this and kind of eliminate those, those younger player mistakes. Um, decent amount of games uh, under their belt here, six so far this year. We'll see how it plays out as Audeville takes command of the ball, trying to work it over to the near field. But it's a nice attack uh, by Carson Etter, the junior. Able to knock it away, but it went all the way back to the keeper there in the Seaver for Ottaville. Ottaville has always done it, you know, this number of years as I've watched them, they've always wanted to control the midfield and look for that long ball. And as you, as you see a handball there, um, look for that long ball and that run on 
by some of their attacking um, forwards like Grant Lease. Uh, they do have the speed, too, on the wings, that's for sure. That's a nicely played ball over towards the far flag. Bounces into the goal box. Continental looking for clearance. That one not going to get too far. Coming over and giving chase to get over to that is Schlagbaum. Of course, he leads the big green in goals this year. He has been a major force in Putnam County League soccer. And that's one thing that uh, Ottaville lost. I'm not exactly sure, but with Will Miller, they've lost probably 60% of their goal scoring from last year. So Kellen has to step up, and he's going to be one that the white and blue from Cottonell are going to key on. Can't leave him alone, especially when you get up close to the box. He has 17 goals coming to this game, six assists, so he's able to distribute as well. Ottaville battles for possession over on the far sideline in their attacking half. I'm going to swing the ball over and to get it to the near sideline to Sellers. Sellers centers it. Centering pass finds its mark in Mansfield. Mansfield tries to swing it out. It's a nice job digging it out of there and Continental able to send it back. I do like the move there by Army for the Pirates to really pressure that clearance and not let the defense have time to handle and see the field. Yeah, and that's one thing that, you know, Coach Zeller, Coach Wanamaker, and Coach Mark would know that they've seen Ren Army for a number of years, and a lot of coaches will tease Stegbauer that he had a COVID year this year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they're going to be happy to see him go. You know, the reigning PCL player of the year, I think three years in a row now, just an absolute dominant force on the soccer pitch. Seller's going to bring it out to, to the near side to Schnipke. Schnipke trying to take it into the middle of the field, gives it away, then sent back out to the right where they find Saxton. Saxton, though, being pressured on the ball by Reddick Bowers. Continental able to move it across midfield. Good possession in the midfield area. Even after a deflection, they're able to keep it in the feet of the big green. Pirates, though, with a steal. Maybe an attack from the left side. As Steckbauer brings it down the left sideline, has it pried away though. As getting a foot on that is Noah Sellers. One of the players that has really impressed me in the last few years, especially this um, early in the year, is Saxton working in the midfield. The kid is speedy, extremely fast, going from defense to offense, and that's something that most soccer teams don't have is somebody that can go that fast and transition from defense to offense and he's one of those kids that can very impressive so far ball went past the end line so we'll have our first goal kick of the game as nip williams hard to miss in the bright pink tonight and he's able to send it back down the field I like how colorful the goalie jerseys have gotten over over the years oh yes yes used to just be your off color for your jerseys. Yeah, now. you know, black. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, Ottaville's kind of stayed true to that, you know, with the black, <laughs> with, uh, you know, Alex Seaver in the net. You know, but when you haven't uh, gave up a goal all year, you can wear whatever you want. That's a good point. That one's going to be cleared as that one nearly misplayed. A clearance went right into the breadbasket of Colin Davis, and then the big green just choose to get it away. Seaver's an interesting – he's had four saves on the year, and you think that's not a lot. Well, he hasn't seen a lot. He's got a really good defense in front of him. Again, they have not allowed a goal all season. Uh, his defense does a lot. Yeah, I mean, that's – as a uh, as a keeper, that's what you want. You want a solid defense. Make mm -hmm. your job easy. And so far, <laughs> facing four shots on the year, been pretty easy. We'll get into that a little bit more, but sometimes – the keeper numbers or the save numbers are low, not necessarily because you haven't seen a lot of shots, but because the things you do as a keeper take away those shots too by charging and playing balls at the top of the box before you let somebody get a shot, things yep. like that. Yep. Uh, the things that don't necessarily go noticed in the uh, in the stat book. Yeah, that's one thing, you know. Can you tell my kid's a keeper? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm making it yeah. patently obvious. And that's one thing, you know, you look at different sports, you know, the stats in soccer versus basketball, everything's tracked in, in basketball, you know, yeah. assists, rebounds, even team rebounds. You know, if the ball yeah. goes out of bounds on a on a you know deflection or whatever. But soccer, shots on goal versus shots, it's a totally different ball game. Schlugbaum nearly came away with the steal there in an attacking position. Cotton able to able to momentarily send it away. Getting a foot on it was Trentman. Trentman 
Centers it. That one, though, going to find its way to uh, Ren Army. Army centering pass just off the mark. Looked like it was intended for Stegbauer. Braxton Stegbauer, the junior in the midfield. There really has not been an uncontested ball in the midfield either way so far this game. We're early no. into it, just about six and a half minutes played, but nothing coming easy for either team right now. You no, know, and, and you knew going into that this game that it's not going to be easy in the midfield. You know, from the 18 to the 18, that's when most of the ball – Ball game's going to be played, and it's going to be a dogfight out there. That one knocked out of play by Continental. Here comes a long throw into the box. That one headed, but sideways. Now a race to get to it on the near sideline. That'll be tapped out of play by Peyton Wilson. Throw in coming up, big green. Jaden Saxton will take the throw. Saxton, line drive to the top of the box. Continental trying to play it up the field, but Going to miss on the pass. But man, do they make passing the other way hard as Colin Davis deflects one. And again, you talk about stats that we don't necessarily keep track of in soccer. There's deflected passes that bounce right back to the other team. It can really mess up your timing. Yes, and, you know, that's one thing both of these teams do well. And it's, it's bit, mainly coaching is the pressure. Nobody gets an easy pass. Everything is contested. That's certainly been the case thus far this half. Audeville possession on their attacking half. That's a nicely played ball as it finds its way over to Schnipke. Schnipke trying to cross as it deflected out of play as Reddick Bowers, one of those freshmen playing in the starting lineup for the Pirates, able to knock it away. Saxton, the throw, top of the goal box. Continental didn't clear it out. Oh, someone lost their boot as that one bounces around <laughs> and uh, ended up as Carter Horseman. Tried to put a shot on net. Instead, his shoe went straight up in the air. Yeah, the boot went just as, about as far as the ball did on that one. <laughs> Didn't get much on it, but I think the loose boot had something to do with it. Audeville gets the throw in. And Audeville's very slowly been taking possession and keeping it in their attacking half and their attacking third of the field. Continental's really stood strong. They haven't seen any real danger as of yet, even though they're playing mostly on their defensive half. Yeah, and what you worry about as a coach, because you, you've seen it watching your son, you know, play at LB and, you know, all the years that I've watched, that most of the action is at one end and all of a sudden, bam, you get a run, yep. and all of a sudden it's one nothing, and you had all the possession. So, it, you know, audible has got to be careful. That's, uh, that's where this game becomes one of the more frustrating, but this time Audeville on the attack. There's the shot, but that's right into the hands of Connor Nip. Williams had that one read all the way. Looks like the shot came off the foot of uh, Trey Landwehr there. And a big punt from the keeper sends it away. Battle for possession in the center circle as that one's going to come out. Schnipke sends it downfield. Oh, that's a nice chip over to the right side as they get to Mansfield. There's the shot, but again, the keeper right in position. And, and Doug, that all started with one of those stats we do talk about that they do keep track of is 50-50 balls. You know, Connor Nip Williams had that punt, and it come off his um, Wren's yeah. head over to the Ottaville team, and then that's what you get. And you can see here, um, headed back into the Attacking third for Ottaville. Ottaville really starting to get some momentum here and starting to threaten a little bit as we played 10 minutes in the first half on the JPS Oil Propane scoreboard. And now here, like you said, Continental. That's a nice move to the right. It just went off the foot of Colin Davis. But back on the attack, chasing it down to the left side of the box. Come the Pirates trying to turn the corner as Army. Army going to get a corner kick for the Pirates. Just like you said, once that field decompresses and you get one clearance downfield that you get a good touch on, things can change in a hurry. Now Continental, chance to run a set piece here. First corner kick of the game either way. This will go into the wind across the field. That's a nicely placed ball. The ball knocked down, but still loose in the box, diving on top of it. Going to be Alex Seaver. That always makes a coach, coach's heartbeat skip a little <laughs> bit when you – when uh, you know an all-state player plays the ball in that well, and it comes off the mitts of the of Alex Seaver, luckily enough, he was able to dive on it. So I'm sure Dustin Markward and his coaches over there breathed a sigh of relief when they saw him on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Now, fortunately for the Big Green, there wasn't really a white jersey in the vicinity no. where that ball got batted down. Had it gone to the backside, it could have been a could big issue. Dangerous. But we remain knotted up, 0-0. Zero, zero. Working it over to the near side, Peyton Wilson. Wilson wanted to try and get around Preston Mansfield. Now we're going to have three subs come on. No, a couple of subs coming on for the Big Green. So we got Alex Lease coming in, and number 23, that's Andy Mormon, a junior and a sophomore. Well, Ottaville with some, some young talent of their own that they're going to mix in here early. So they try and switch field, work it to the left, now back to the right, but nobody home on that one. Easily taken away by Army. Army pass right through the middle of the field, finds Davis. Davis sizes up the situation. He's going to widely drop it back and get it to the waiting feet of Reddick Bowers. Bowers had a little trouble corralling it. Now his pass is going to be deflected. And, yeah, I think that's going to be a foul. Oh, I thought that might go against Continental originally. Yeah, it did. And, and Ottaville quick kicked yes, it, it did. just didn't take advantage of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ottaville tried to go quick and catch the Pirates off guard, but the Pirates were waiting. Ottaville with possession, though, over to the far side of the field, drop it back as they get it to the foot of Carter Horseman. Horseman works it through the middle. It's so many contested passes. You just can't sit back and wait on something to come to you in this contest. As the ball sent over to the left side, Bowers looking maybe for a cross here. He's gotten down the left side line, and that one deflected and out of bounds. Last getting a foot on that was Alex Lease. Quick throw for Continental. Army takes it towards the middle, wants to pull it back to his left. Instead, centering pass will be cleared away. But right back to the Pirates who were waiting there as Peyton Wilson set it down. Play it forward, trying to work it back to Bowers. And they're looking for Army. There's a shot, and that's going to fly well wide to the left and out of bounds. Goal kick coming up now for Audeville. Yeah, that was a nice one-two punch. Every once in a while, you know, Continental will bring Carson Etter up through on that far side. And... Uh, Carson's a big boy. He goes 6'1", six, 6'2", six, very strong. Carson's biggest problem is he's too strong. Sometimes <laughs> he doesn't lean over the ball, and he, it, it tends to sail on him. Um, but he's <laughs> when he gets a hold of it, you don't want to be in his path. That's a nice through ball to the middle of the field to Stegbauer. Stegbauer threads the needle, had it chipped away from him, and Audeville going to get clear, and uh, we're going to get a whistle. Yep, Stegbauer with the push. Yep. Momentum carried him right into the Audeville player, and it will be an Audeville kick coming up. I think he just lost his balance a little bit, and unfortunately the Audeville guy was there. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and uh, they get the ball on a free kick. It's just how it goes sometimes. Yep. Let's pass over to the left side to Grant Lease. Lease had it knocked away. And the officials stop, and I think they're going to say that it rolled out of bounds last touched by the big green. You know, that's one thing that a lot of coaches are teach you is that uh, pick up the ball and throw it in. Make the make that referee call something. And right there you could see Grant Lease did that exact. Trying to get it to go real yep. quick. Yep. Every once in a while you'll get away with it. Audeville gets the steal back, and that pass, though, going to be off the mark. It was intended for Colin Davis, but well behind him. Throw in coming up Continental. Reddick Bowers the throw as he puts it in play to Stegbauer. Stegbauer drops it back. Continental going to try and draw the big green out a little bit, leave a little bit of that defensive compression that they're up against. That's a nice steal taken away by Lease. Alex Lease leads the charge, centers it up where he gets it to two Slogbaum. That one into the wind and hung up there for a while. <laughs> Connor Nip Williams. He, he had like, a Is that thing going to come down or not? That, that was that was a fair catch in baseball. <laughs> He's yeah, able the, to bring it down though. Yeah, the wind just held that up there. And you know, we got plenty of game left. That should uh, take note. Both teams don't get the ball up in the air. It needs to be low and hard. Absolutely, especially on a night like tonight. 
Ball going to be stolen away, and Schlockbaum comes up with it. It's a nice centering pass as he finds a man in Landwehr. Landwehr almost had his man. That was a nice run made by Mormon, but not going to be able to connect as Continental tries to send it back up the field. That's a nice takeaway right there by Trentman. Trentman, if he doesn't come up with that, I think Continental's off and running on a three-on-two. Yeah. Instead, now Audeville in the attack. But a pirate clearance will send it out of play. And the danger averted for now. So we've played 17 minutes nearly here in the first half on the JPS Oil Propane scoreboard. Again, our scoreboard presented by JPS Oil Propane, proudly serving Putnam County. That's two more subs for Audeville. Continental has not brought anybody off the bench yet in the first 17 minutes. So, Doug, that's something to be aware of as this game get, this goes on. This get dangerous. On. There's a shot. That one is lofted over the goal. Quentin Schnipke got his foot on it, couldn't get his knee over it, and set it high. That, that was probably the best opportunity that they've had so far. He Just was a little bit high. Sitting right there. But he was under pressure. And again, yes. when you, you make people have to go a split second earlier than they want to, those are the things that happen. So, and Continental playing this exactly the way that they have to. As they have ceded nothing to Audeville. But now here in the attack again, there goes Schlagbaum. Schlagbaum will start, stop, give, and trying to get it right back off the foot of, it looks like that was Schnipke, but unable to connect. Continental will just send this one out of play. Ketlin Schlugbaum to make the throw. Line drive to the top of the box. That one chested down by the defense. Initially, it looked like it was going to be a shot. Then it went right back to Horseman. Horseman fires one in there, but coming out to take the ball away is going to be Nip Williams. And credit him for three saves so far this game. Yeah, and... One thing that he does, and it's becoming more and more prevalent, is uh, is the throw on a on a keeper, and I'm sure your son probably does that more and more than get it out quick. You know, you got more control over that. Yeah. If you're trying to get people back down the field, you wait to pump. But if everybody's really pushed up and you've got somebody out wide on the wing who's standing open, just get it out there to them and get back on the attack. Yeah, get it and go. Sometimes that's the best offense is when you can counterattack. Ottaville with possession here. Battle for it. Uh, now taken away by the Pirates. Army leads the charge back down the field. Plays one out wide to the right side and stepping in to separate the ball from the Pirate. Garrett Trentman comes up with a nice a, defensive play. Exactly. Very nice defensive play. Continental gets it back, trying to split a couple of players there with Stugbauer. Still a battle for possession and a precarious position for Audeville, but they're able to come up with it. Now they look for the pass. That one got a little bit long. Pirates come up with it initially, but then right back to the big green. That one's stolen away, though. Stegbauer working it out to the left side, looking for a cross, puts it right in the center, but no white kits there for that. And the momentum starting to shift a little bit as Continental getting some attacking opportunities here. Haven't put one on frame just yet, but getting more and more possession. Yes, <laughs> and uh, that's that's the ebb and the flows of the, this game. You'll see it at one end, and then all of a sudden, bam, we're, we're at this end for the next six minutes. So, like you said, Continental's putting some pressure, and the ball goes back in. Wilson's going to have to clear it. Yes, they send it all the way back to Peyton Wilson. Wilson sends it up the line. And the ensuing pass off the foot of Carson Etter out of bounds. Let's take a quick break with 1945 left in the first half. We're back right after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Putnam County League Soccer here on WOSN. Doug Jenkins, Josh Crossgrove with you here as we are settle in for some Putnam County League Soccer. So far scoreless with 19-24 remaining in this first half of play. Been a pretty evenly matched game in the early parts of this half, so it was Ottaville really with the attack, but we've seen Continental really get back into it and have their opportunities here the last five minutes or so. Yeah, and, you know, the thing with soccer, people go, 
you played to a 0-0 tie, a 1-1 <laughs> one, one tie. You played 80 minutes. and But, you know, if this game ends up in a tie or whatever, you know, this first half of this first period, it's been a defensive battle, and it's been a great soccer match so far. You know, even yeah. though they've not been great – Oh, um, my, that might have been that, a handball. I and think I, it was. I think Quentin Schnipke even thought it was going to be a handball. Yeah, he started he, to he retreat. Stopped. Yeah. But I, this has been a great soccer match so far, and it's, and it's basically been in the middle third of this ha of this field. Yeah, I mean, zero zero games can go one of two ways. One, it's two teams just kicking it back and forth of each other. Or two, it's two teams attacking each other but just not being able to find that great opportunity. And that's what we've seen so far is – you know, we've seen some good passing. We've seen some good defense and making it hard on both teams. Nobody's given an inch, and that's what you expect with these two <laughs> teams. I would expect nothing less. That's a nice ball, but Continental is going to have opportunity to send it back downfield by Peyton Wilson. It was Quentin Schnipke who sent it down there. Slog bomb. Slog bomb in some dangerous territory. Bumps it over to his right to lease. Slide tackle just outside the goal box, taken away by Continental. But it's coming up to take the ball away there is Horseman. Horseman passes over to the left side of the field. Continental gets clearance, but it's Big Green waiting on it in the midfield as Landon Horseman comes up with it. That was a heck of a defensive play by the Continental um, defensive back. You know, he's, he's also a freshman. That was Monty Rail, number one, as a freshman. That's a big tackle especially right there at the 18. And you got If you're going to go to the ground, you've got to come up with that one. He definitely did and did not allow for what would have been a very dangerous shot. Working with it is Army. Army gives it away, gets it right back, trying for the diagonal into the midfield. It bounces right back to him, turns, shoots, and that one deflected away by Alex Seaver. He'll get his first game or first save of the game and still the ball alive. The cross. Tipped away, sent back to midfield. There's a cross into the goal box. Hustling over to get over to it is Noah Sellers. It will go out of bounds, but Sellers did not touch it, so it'll be nope. a big green throw. Bain Stegbauer hustled as, as hard as he could, but we have a stoppage. Looks like uh, maybe Grant Lease is hobbling off the field. That looks to be the case as he goes over to the sidelines. That's, that's not good for the Ottaville attack. Um, he plays extremely hard on that left side as an attacking forward. So, and we got a one for one as Grant comes out. We got a freshman for freshman swap on uh, the Continental side. Entering the contest, there's going to be Tyson Clements. Lots of number nines in the grade <laughs> column of the yes, spreadsheet for, for Continental. I mean, that can be both good and bad. You've got freshmen who are able to play at the varsity level. You know, sometimes you take your lumps. You're a little bit undersized. But, man, you learn a lot really quick. Yes. I think that's especially true in the Putnam County League. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times with Bain, Bain Stegbauer, the coach's son, being a freshman – um, a lot of these kids have grown up around Brian. Yeah. You know, so they've been around him for years and years and years. So they know what to expect when they get to this level. That ball is a nice opportunity to the right side of the goal box. Just a little bit much roll and rolled out of bounds. And likewise, Dustin's got young kids. He'll get there one day <laughs> where all his kids' buddies will know what to expect when he's going to coach them. But he's, he's got some young ones yet. That wooden sent flying down the right side. Nobody there for Audeville. That one putting no man's land coming up with it. The big green, can they take advantage? Yes, they can. As that comes off the foot of Preston Mansfield, the goal makes it 1 0 with 15 25 remaining in the first half. Just a miscue by Continental. The Audeville big green take advantage. We'll tell you all about it after we come back from this break. Here on WOSN. And welcome back to Ottaville. The Big Green taking a 1-0 advantage with 15-25 left in the first half. It's Preston Mansfield takes advantage of the miscue from Continental. 
And uh, you saw what the Pirates were trying to do, try to play mm -hmm. it back to the keeper, let him get it down the field, but there just yep. wasn't enough weight on the pass and the big green attack. Yeah, that's, you know, that has become more and more popular the last five or ten years is that pass back to the keeper. And every once in a while, you see something like that um, go awry, and Peyton Wilson just did not have enough oomph on that pass to get it back to Connor. And... Uh, you know, give Audeville all the credit. Preston Mansfield, he back there and just gave it enough to get it across the line. Still not an easy shot for Mansfield no, either. It, he was wide right and deep into the goal box. It was not a good he angle. Had to cut that angle pretty hard and able to skillfully put that in the side net. It. Yeah, that's reminiscent of two years ago here. Uh-oh. Well, now Continental on the attack right away in the goal box. The deflection in that one will go out of bounds. And that's where a quick equalizer could have been just yes. off of a deflection as Continental just pressing up into the box, nearly got one to bounce backwards. I think that was Jonathan Etter in there making some things happen. Yep, him and Wren. But two years ago, that's how Continental scored their lone goal was on a back pass. It was too hot for Seaver to handle, and it went right into the back of the net. So um, this, <laughs> this match is not – it's it's not unfamiliar to see um, stuff like that. That's the other uh, side of that uh, coin when you pass back to the keeper. It has to be the proper weight. Can't yes. be too soft. You see what had just happened happen. If it's too much, that can be a problem for the keeper too. And that one deflected out of bounds. Throw it coming up. Audeville. Schlagbaum wants to go quickly with it. And, Doug, we're going to have to see what Continental does this the next five, ten minutes to see how they respond to that. Uh, looks like they're coming even harder, as uh, the case would be. You know, sometimes you get out one nothing, it, it, it ignites it. It's that second goal. If you get down two, that's the one that sometimes can be really tough to mentally recover from. Right now, Continental showing no signs of let up. Right, but on the other hand, if you, uh, you know, every coach you talk to, at least the two coaches at Continental, you know, especially, you know, I'm really good friends with Toby Bidlack, the girls' coach, but he says the worst lead in soccer is two nothing. <laughs> because you let as, up yep. as you let down, you know you, you're up to nothing. You think, okay, we got this, and all of a sudden, bam, it's two one. Yep. And all of a sudden, they have the momentum. Then it's two to two. You don't know what happened. So as a big throw on the left side for the big green, Continental able to send it away. But coming up with it, setting it on the ground there is Schnipke. Schnipke gives it away. Now get into the hands of Landwehr, or to the feet of Landwehr, I should say. Landwehr battling, though, under duress. He's going to have to give the ball up. Big Green trying to turn towards their net. Just unable to find a good pass or drop. Tried to send one through the left side, but nothing there. Cottonelle's looking for an opportunity to get it down the field as well, but Ottaville's just all over. That ball deflected out of bounds. Cottonelle will get the throw. Played on the near sideline and getting it to Colin Davis. Davis tries to find one to the center circle, but it's deflected away, retreating back to get it. Mason Rail. He kicked it right to uh, <laughs> yeah, the guy that you probably don't want to, Mr. <laughs> Schlagbaum. Colin Schlagbaum, centering pass. Uh, again, that's just good defense played by Mason Rail. What could have been a pass to set up a shot opportunity deflected away. Now Continental trying to attack down the left flank. Nice move back to the middle there by Army. Army in all sorts of big green traffic. Just couldn't find a way to split them as it's finally set back down the field. That's one thing that Wren has done for years and years is he knows how to use his body and he knows how to dribble through traffic. And, you, and that was just evidence of it right there. But give Ottaville all the credit on their defensive end. They got the ball off his foot. Big clearance by Continental. That one comes down in the center circle. Davis looking for some space to operate. It's stolen away. Now here come the big room. That's a nice, nicely played ball over the tackle attempt. Slugbaum has it top of the box. Had it momentarily pried away. Big collision there, but again, really no advantage given either nope. way. So play on. That's the correct call there. Yeah, both these officials have done a nice job of keeping the play under control. 
And this is definitely a game that can get physical, but it's yes. been, been a fairly fought contest so far as that's cleared out of bounds. Pass intended over on the right side, trying to find Brandon Cavillage for the big green. Now Schlagbaum will take the throw. Two subs in for Ottaville and one sub for Continental. It's good to see Grant Lease back. He's still kind of hobbling on that right foot, flexing it a little bit, but good to see him back in the game. Slugbomb's pass is deflected. Back out coming up with his Cavillage. Cavillage trying to turn the corner, but battled for by Bain Stegbauer. Cavillage takes it all the way across. Ball got loose, and that one going to be lofted high. And pardon me, that's Grant Lease who sent it over the top of the net. And it and was deflected. Bounds. Yep. Oh, so it was. it's Ottaville's first corner kick of the evening. Yes, it is. So good pressure by the Continental defense, but it's still in uh, the attacking third for Ottaville. Grant Lease on the corner kick. Just under nine and a half remaining. There is the cross, and that one did it barely stayed in play. <laughs> He's got a better angle than we do. Most definitely. It looked like it was going out of bounds. That thing tightrope the end line, but as it was sent back out, Ottaville trying for a big home run shot there, and that one goes flying out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick coming up now for the Pirates. Connor Nip Williams, three saves, one goal allowed in this contest. And that's one of those things where you hate that. Connor gave up that goal because it's not necessarily on him. <laughs> no, it, yeah. it, it, that's one of the things. A, a bad defensive pass back, and he couldn't do anything. It's like the it's like the interception that tips off of the receiver's right. hands. Yeah. It still goes to the quarterback. Yeah, but really, is it? It's it's kind of like one of them stats, but it, it's still. If you're the goalie, you know what you're getting into. It definitely feels uh, that's exactly it. That's. Been living that life for <laughs> several years now. So. I'm, I'm sure your son has come home. I can't <laughs> believe I, I that gets credited to me. I didn't really give it up. <laughs> no, never heard that uh. one before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Completely foreign concept. No. Again, just one of the things that makes soccer what it is. It's, it can be frustrating sometimes. Yep. Hey, that's sports. Ball deflected out of bounds. Now with 7.56 remaining. Again, it's one nothing Audible on the JPS Oil Propane. Scoreboard presented by JPS Oil Propane, proudly serving Putnam County. That's a nice pass over to the right corner. So they're trying to get it to Alex Lease, and that'll be sent out of play. That's nicely that, deflected off of Lease. Yes, Good play by the defense right there. And that's that's a freshman coming up big on the defensive end. Reddick Bowers able to get possession back for his Pirates. And he'll get another throw-in opportunity here as well as it's deflected right back out quickly down the line. And, hey, let's do it again. I guess this is one way to get the <laughs> offense just into the other half, is, except for when you throw it to the other team. That was nicely baited, though, by Saxton. As Saxton kind of lied in wait there, waiting for the opportunity to come through the steal. Momentarily got the big green on the attack. Clearance, though, deflected right back to the big green, Mansfield, who has the goal to his credit. Got possession of it. Now it's dropped back out to Lease. Lease gets around two Pirates. Setting it up left side. Pass into the box. That one rolling loose. And now it'll be cleared. And it'll be another Audeville quarter kick. It'll be their second of the night. That's all you could do. Jonathan Heather just had to clear it out the back end. Sometimes you live to fight another day. And as they set up for the quarter kick, we'll take a timeout with 627 remaining here in the first half. Back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottaville, where we get set for the big green corner kick. This one will go into the wind. We'll see how they play it, Josh. That one is low. There's the diving header. It's still loose in the box. Continental looking for clearance. Didn't get a good one there. Now it's still loose, and they're able to pry it away. That was dangerous, Josh. <laughs> yes, it was. That. There's nothing you can do but just hope and pray that they get the ball out of the 18 there. I still there by Army. Army gave it away, got it right back, and eventually taken away by the big green. Saxton got on to it. Saxton going to lead the charge. Had it knocked away from him. Retreating on the play is Braxton Stegbauer. Stegbauer made a 
Nice play from behind to knock it away and negate any sort of attack there. He's going to come back up with it, too. Stegbauer centering pass, and they're going to go right back to him. That pass was a little hard to handle, but coming up with it was Army. Swings it over to the right side of the field. Doug Jenkins, Josh Crossgrove with you here on WOSN. Audeville on the attack. They'll send one into the box, and that would easily field it by Connor Nip Williams. And we talked about goalie stats sometimes that uh, they're – they can be cruel. Other times, they can be kind. That was not really a shot, but it was going to go into it, the back of the net, so that's yep, a save. That is a save. It was on frame. <laughs> so, you know, Doug, one thing that uh, Audeville has done the last couple minutes, they seemed like they have ramped up the pressure, especially in the midfield. Uh, they most definitely have, and it's not like they were playing with a lack of intensity to begin no, with. No, no. It's 4.43 separates us from the half. It's a 1-0 game in favor of the Big Green Putnam County League soccer action. Again, this is Audeville's first Putnam County League game. They did play Fort Jennings once, but that was not a league contest. They'll meet Correct. again later in the season. You might as well play them twice. You only live three <laughs> miles from each yeah, other. You don't so, even have to get the bus out for that one. No, I, I think half the people live <laughs> in a Fort Jennings area. <laughs> Because the Audeville doesn't have a rural route, so every, half the people in Audeville have a Fort James address. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> it's one of the quirky things about Putnam County. It has been quite some time since I've been uh, this far west to call a soccer game. Way back when, I think I was telling you before the game. It's probably been 18 years, but back in the day on WDOH radio, we used to do quite a bit of. Putnam County League soccer. And yep. I remember the old Audeville soccer complex, which was pretty nice at the time, but uh, what they've built here for the soccer it's, teams and the track facility is it's beautiful. very beautiful. Nice takeaway by Lease. Yes, it is. Lease leading the charge. Got to dump it off to Les Schlagbaum, puts it in, but no, pardon me, that the shot is from Mansfield. His second attempt on goal, but that time easily saved by Connor Nip Williams. It's a big boot down the field. Flips the field, but. Immediately set back down by the big green. 3.13 left. You know, it's true in a lot of sports. It's true in soccer, too. These, If you can get a goal in the closing minutes of a half or that quick score, it can really, really change what the next half looks like. Yes. I was just thinking that same thing. If Audeville can get another one or if Continental could get an equalizer, the mentality going into the half is so much different. Definitely would shake up the complexion of this game. Audeville working it over to the right side. Grant Lease turns the corner but couldn't keep his feet. That one slowed down, though. Continental had to send it back down the field. It was going to stay in play. Coming up with the ball, Landwehr. Landwehr centering pass. Now they're going to work it all the way across as they get it to the waiting feet of Garrett Trentman. And that ball rolls out of bounds. I think it's... It looks like an Audeville throw. It's either going to be an Audeville throw, perhaps a kick. There was the collision there. I don't think we got the whistle on well, that. Well, he's, he's no, kind of, yep, it is going to be a free kick for Audeville. Well, he didn't make contact with the ball before the collision, so that generally will draw the whistle. And that'll be the case here. So with 2.03, this is going to come from the left side of the field. Chipped into the box, and that one, Nip Williams, whoo, got away from him. <laughs> then he had to tightrope the top of the box. Yes. It became a very quick factor for him. Yeah, he shrunk the box in a hurry when he comes out that high. It's a nice header and back into the middle for the big green as they try and get it to Mormon. Continental putting the pressure on. Oh, that's knocked away. Continental looking for a whistle there as the collision yeah. as they tried to turn the corner. We got a headband that came off. Play on. We've had a shoe missing. We've had a headband missing. As long as we don't lose any teeth, we're all right. Uh, yeah. I've heard of that in the preseason. <laughs> I saw pictures of that. That was not pretty. That's not pretty. That's a loose ball in the box, though. And coming away with it, the big green. They're going to drop it back out to Mansfield. Mansfield looking for feet. He's able to find his man at Trepman. Inside a minute left in the half. Centering pass, Mormon. Back over the left side. Trepman maybe looking for the give and go. Not there. Mormon centering pass and nobody in a green kit able to attack that and it will go out of play. And a 
goal kick coming up for Continental. You're right. Audeville really has ratcheted up the pressure here the last 10 minutes of this first half, trying to find that second goal. Now, Nip Williams sends it down the field. That one headed out of bounds, and the officials say last off of a white jersey. That's a quick throw down the sideline, looking for Slogbaum. Got between his legs. Ooh. I don't know how that didn't kill the referee. Some quick reflexes on the right yeah. side here. Ten, Ten nine, seconds remain. That one eight, will be cleared back towards seven, midfield. Six, five, Pass over to the right four, side. Three, not going to be able to attempt a one. shot. Well, there's a left footer, but that's going to go wide, and that's going to do it for the first half. It's been a back and forth game so far, but it's the Big Green who own a one nothing lead after 40 minutes of play on the JPS Oil Propane scoreboard. We'll take a timeout. We'll recap the stats here at the half coming up after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Audeville. Doug Jenkins, Josh Crossgrove with you here on WOSN. Putnam County League Soccer, our order of business. And right now it's a 1-0 lead for the Audeville Big Green. That goal coming off the foot of Preston Mansfield with about 6.27 remaining in the first half. And that right now is the difference in this contest. Cotton trying to work it down into an attacking position. Tried to turn and get a foot onto there was Colin Davis. Ball bounces out wide to the right. Audeville struggling to get clearance. And still stuck in there again. <laughs> Continental and Audeville, for that matter, neither of them concede a pass. No, not nothing at all. Nothing down the line, nothing to the middle. You're hard pressed to really even drop the ball and not be under duress. And you, you saw that when Continental chose to drop the ball. That's what cost them their goal. Yeah. So. It'll be a Continental throw in on this side. Carson Netter gets it in, gets it right back. And that pass going to be taken away pretty easily by Grant Lease. Lease tried to punch it upfield. It was deflected out of bounds. Here comes the throw. Schlagbottom rifles that one in. And flying in to deflect it away was Mason Rail. That cloud couldn't have come at a better time on the yes. left side of the press box. As the sun continues to set here in Putnam County. It's a beautiful facility, but when that sun's shining <laughs> right at us, it's hard to call a game, Doug. You do pray for some cloud cover. <laughs> Not rain, just some cloud cover. Yeah. Still a lot of soccer to be played here in this Putnam County League showdown. We talked about it a lot in that first half, is how both teams just ratcheting up the pressure. You saw Continental do it there to really close the half. Continental seems to be answering uh, the intensity. There's a drop and a shot. That one's going to get wide. That coming off the foot of Jaden Saxton. Just got a little bit of spin on it, caught it on the side a little bit. And as you can see, a lot of times you just look to see how the keeper reacts. Yeah. The keeper doesn't look like he's that troubled by it. You know the shot's not really on target. Yep. And Connor Nip Williams there said, nah, that one's not here. We're it's good. a little wide, a little wide. <laughs> so, you know, Doug, go back about 30 seconds. You had Ren Army and Kellen Schlagbaum going to battle right there at the top of the 18. That's, that's a soccer fan's dream right there, those two <laughs> going at it. <laughs> but you talked about it in the pregame. These kids have been playing each other for the last eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, they know they knew who to look out for. It oh, hasn't yeah. changed a ton. Nope. Oh, that's a nice move of the box over to the left side, back to the right. That one deflected up as Preston Mansfield, maybe one touch too many. And coming up with it is Connor Nip Williams. Mansfield has been a problem, though. Yes. As that is going to be his third shot on goal, but Connor Nip Williams has been able to deny him twice. He's just sneaky. There's no other way to put it, but he's just sneaky there in the box. He's got good handles, able to move left and right. As that one deflected out of bounds, Audeville take the throw there, and they're attacking third. That one rifled in by, as that was taken by Grant Lease. Good save by Edder. Grant tried to shield him, but Carson was able to get around him. Long pass down the field. That one. Got past the Pirates. Slogbaum comes over to get it. Drops it back. And ball finds its way right back to him. Chip it back. Ball headed down. And now that's a nice left foot forward, but good clearance by the Pirates. Did a nice job holding their back line that time. Yes, they do. 
Peyton Wilson back there is. Uh, yep. No, I no, I, I thought uh, I thought he was going to get a whistle there. Looked like the ref had his. Uh, his and it's getting a little, I won't say chippy yet, but it's getting a little bit more physical than it it's was in the first half. Something to watch. I think. Uh, something to watch right here with Monty Rail and Grant Lease. Yeah, they keep running into, finding ways to run into each other. Yeah. That's, that's the thing with soccer, though. When you go up and down the field, you're going to run into the same defense or the same offensive guy. Slogbomb tried to turn to his right. Looks to rifle on that one. Couldn't quite get a good foot on it, and it makes for an easy save for Connor Nip Williams. And he tried an outlet pass to Bain, but just threw it too long. Threw it all the way to midfield and still too long. Nice defensive play by the Ottaville outside back to come up and get that. It was the first shot opportunity for Schlagbaum tonight. He's going to get it right back. It's seven saves so far for Connor Nip Williams. That's a nice... Start and stop into the box. The ball sets down. It was momentarily lost right into the hands of Connor Nip Williams. The big that great was Preston dead Mansfield right. again. Yes, it was. <laughs> He's just he inside the 18. He has just been a pest for Continental. Has a knack for finding his way to the ball. By the way, one of the stats that uh, we, we didn't mention here as we got into the second half is that Alex Seaver had a save in the first half. That's notable because it's only his fifth of the season. Right. Uh, not because he uh, doesn't make saves. He just doesn't get the opportunities. That's a nice chip into the box, but nicely played by Connor Nip Williams. And right there, that's what we're talking about. That's not a stat that's nope. going to count as a save, but that's good positioning by the goalie. He's yep. not under the attack. He's right where he needs to be and takes away any opportunity for Ottaville. So the Pirates trying to work out of their back. Over to the right side to Etter. The centering pass deflected. Big Green come up with it. And again, it's Mansfield. One thing so far in this uh, first eight minutes or so in the half is Continental has not had as crisp of passing as they had in the first half. And Ottaville's taken advantage of it a couple times. There's a pass to the right corner. That will not stay in bounds as they were trying to get it. Onto the outside to Carson Hedder, see if he can turn the corner, but it was not there. Chip down the field. Yeah, yeah we're definitely going to get a whistle there. They might, yeah, there's going to be a card come out here. Yep, I'm thinking. You can see where uh, Monty Rail kind of lowered his shoulder, ran past the ball. Yep. You know, we said, I said a couple minutes ago that was something to watch. Yeah. And, uh, now the rule this year from the OHSA is you actually do not have to come off the field after a car, but I think a lot of coaches still like to do it. It's a chance yep. to calm your player down, talk to him a little bit. Yeah, it's still a very good practice. Yeah. And Brian Stegbauer is wanting an explanation from Mike K over there. Well, as they discuss that, let's take a quick break here on WSN. 33-25 remains in the second half. one nothing is the score on the JPS Oil Propane scoreboard in favor of Ottaville. Back right after this. Welcome back to the home of the Big Green, Ottaville and Continental battling it out in the Putnam County League Soccer Contest. Doug Jenkins, Josh Crossgrove with you here on WOSN. Our scoreboard presented by JPS Oil Propane proudly serving Putnam County, and it shows Ottaville up by a score of 1-0. And that coming off the foot of Preston Mansfield back with about six and a half remaining in the first half. But here in the second half, this game has gotten a lot more physical. We just saw yep. a yellow card come out of the officials. have allowed some contact, but that last contact was definitely not one that was going to get by them. Yeah, and we're, we're still the Mike K, the head referee for tonight, is still talking to Coach uh, Brian Stegbauer. And I'm not sure if it wasn't just on, because um, uh, Grant Lease came out. It was probably just a sub, but I don't think it was a double yellow. Didn't appear to be the case. No, as but a, it, yeah. you kind of wonder if, if um, Grant come out just to kind of cool him down too, which is good on Dustin's part, Coach Markward. Um, you know, and Coach Stegbauer sent Monty Rail, who was the recipient of that uh, – Yellow card, right back to the touchline. He got him a little bit of a break, and the assistant coaches give him 
Some quick instructions. He'll get right back into the next opportunity. But Audeville on the attack. There's a centering pass, and that one just got away off of the foot of Trey Landwehr. Looked like he didn't want to one-touch it, but didn't have enough room to take that extra touch. Yep. Good. I mean, and we've seen it all night long. The Continental defense collapse as soon as that ball gets into that 18. They were right there on him. The ball is sent long down the field. The defensive header keeps it going that way, but since it went off the head of the defense, Alex Seaver can just go ahead and pick it up. Yeah, and he's back there. Hey, guys, um, thanks for getting me the ball. <laughs> I've kind of been bored back here right now. He hasn't had a ton to do here in the second half. No. Nope. He definitely had to command the defense in the first half as Continental was on the attack, but now here go the big green again as they have it on the left flank, centering pass, finds a mark. And a wide open man in Saxton. Saxton flings it over to the right. And a nice defensive tackle there by Reddick Bowers sticks it, but the big green with back. Left foot high over the net. And it will go out of play. Ottawa getting their looks, but not getting dead on looks for the most part. And when they have, Connor Nip Williams has been standing in the way. He has eight saves so far tonight. He's done a fantastic job. You know, and Alex Seaver, he's. <laughs> I'd like to say he's done a fantastic job, <laughs> but he just hasn't faced what Con Connor Nip Williams has faced so far this year, this uh, this game and this year. Well, the one thing that's hard for us as commentators to get is that the, what talk is happening on the field. And that's yeah. a lot of what goalies do is direct the defense, tell yep. them where to go, and they're a lot of times the loudest person on the field. Actually, you can hear him right there. There's a nice pass to the right side as Continental. Trying to cut it back to the left side. Edder tried to go with the left foot across the net, looking for a pass. It wasn't there. He's going to retreat back to get it. Looked like the pass was for Davis, but could not connect. This sent back out to midfield. Schlagbaum did a nice job of letting it go by. Splits the defense. Found a man. He had Continental had one defender playing way back that allowed Audeville to stay on side there. That could have been they, very dangerous with Schlagbaum out there. Pass up the right side. As Peyton Wilson plays pretty far of a back line, but I think you're giving a little bit of ground here the way as aggressive as Audeville has been. You don't, I mean, as much as you'd like to try and get him offside. By the way, we haven't had an offside in no. tonight's game. Uh, you, and I think you just don't want that fluke no call on an offside. You'd rather keep the ball in front of you on a night right. like tonight. Turning the corner is Davis. Davis trying to get into position. There's the left foot. There is the equalizer. equalizer. Into the side netting. Colin Davis wow. buries one, and we are all knotted up at one apiece. I just thought at some point one of the Ottaville defenders was going to come over and shift and take him, and nobody did. They just let him run right through the – from from probably 40 yards out. Yes, they did. He ran. Kind of surprising so far the way the game has been going on. That's probably the most green space we've seen the team have. We'll take a timeout. 30-23 remains. We're tied at one back after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Audeville on the JPS Oil Propane scoreboard. It is now 1-1 after the goal by Colin Davis. JPS Pro Oil Propane proudly serving Putnam County. You know, Doug, I want to give a shout-out to the Audeville community and their, their players as we see Connettle getting another we'll get opportunity. Right to that. Oh, that one State went Power just stepped on it. Yes, he did. But Back-footed it. If you see um, these ball boys with blue shirts on, uh, they say Davis strong on the back side of it. Um, that's for Colin's older brother, uh, Wyatt, who's uh, graduated last year, was a senior on this team. Um, he's going through uh, some cancer right now, and I think all the uh, Putnam County teams have, when they play Continental and maybe even mm -hmm. when they are just playing a PCL game, they're wearing these Davis Strong shirts. So shout out to the Ottaville community. Shout out to Fort Jennings, Kaleida, Miller City, you know, Kudos to them for supporting this. You know, I know a lot of these guys come over for the 3v3 tournament in uh, July. Mm -hmm. So, and it's kind of fitting that Colin got that, that last goal. So, very um, nice. Keep, keep white in your prayers. He's 18 years old, going through a lot. So, he's a good kid, good family. That's one thing I've always loved about Putnam County is you might be rivals on the field or on the court, but it's a tight knit community through and through. Yes. And it's being shown here tonight. And we're going to get a trip on Audeville here. This game got interesting in a hurry. Not that it wasn't to begin with, but like you said, he just had so much room to operate. Davis yeah. did. The defense didn't shift over. 
I, it, it was, you know, normally you see that out of the Ottaville defense. Somebody's going to come over and tackle, but they didn't. That is the first goal allowed by Ottaville all season. That ball put into the box, but harmlessly into the hands of Alex Seaver. Who will get a save credit for that as that one drifted into his hands? And, you know, he's a senior. we got two senior goalkeepers out here, and both of the times we've seen tonight, they've been positioned well. Yes, they have been. And then was especially on that free kick right there. He was positioned extremely well. Trying to sort his way through midfield there is Andy Mormon. Stolen away, though, by Continentals. They work it to the left side. Ottaville will pick it up, send it down the right sideline. The Continental defense trying to shield, but not able to really find anywhere to go with it yet. Is just trying to keep possession there is Red Army. Throw in coming up. Looks like this will be Lease on the far side. He, you know, they're going to change out Slog Bomb. will take the throw. Lease really has a cannon and can put it in yes. this. Slug Bomb has a pretty good throw, too. Both of those kids, and Lease is going right next to Connor. Yes, he is. There's the throw, and going up high, Connor Nip Williams got a hand on it, got away from him. Continental desperately needing a clearance, and they will get it. Yep. Well, that was a well placed ball from the corner. Ottaville back on the attack, pass to the right side, Lease. Looking to drop it back. Now he hangs on to it. That one will be pried away from him, but goes out onto the green track. Slug Bomb will take the throw. Getting a nice running start from that track. <laughs> As you can, there's a nice throw into the midfield. That one deflected by Mormon off his head. And now Continental trying to work it up the sideline, slowing it up a little bit as Etter, Etter. Gives it away as he gets it to Davis. Davis collapsed. <laughs> he got triple teamed there. Yeah, there's a lot of green jerseys around him. Now here come the big green on the attack. Working to the right side as Horseman. Horseman puts one in. That one took an odd deflection, Ooh. and Nip Williams had to be on his horse to go back to his left side. I think that just parry that I away. I think that deflected off of Peyton Wilson there. I think so. Because Peyton kind of, you know, he looked back like, I hope that didn't go in the net. <laughs> <laughs> Quite fortunate there as Horseman would be his second shot on goal. Had that gone in, it would have been credited to him, but it was a deflection. Fortunately for Connor Nip Williams, he hadn't really moved to the way the ball was going just yet. Split second later, and he could have been in some trouble. Yeah, and that's that's what you know when you put a keeper that's six foot four in between the pipes. That's a nice thing that's, to have because in their agility, you know, he can move at a moment's notice. Centering pass, that one going to be put up high. Peyton Wilson gets into the midfield. Players jockeying for position here. Shielding and getting to the ball as Trey Landwehr sends it over right side. And the big green going to come up with it momentarily. No, they won't. It got around Landwehr. Now trying to dig it out of some traffic. There is Stegbauer. Continental, nice pass right back to Stegbauer. Nice use of the triangle over there. Yeah. They went forward, they went backward, then right back to the middle. Unfortunately, they can't find an attack out of it. They were looking for the long ball, Bain, but they just a little bit too long. That's probably that's second time tonight where we thought maybe handball, and even the player who touched it thought handball. And yeah, we played well, on, but that they, one's more on the frame, though. Yeah, that they've clarified it this year that sleeve and up, so more your your shoulders, bicep, yeah. bicep and your shoulder, you can use. Um, and a lot of kids are using it to direct the ball now. That's a great question. This is why having you as a ref is <laughs> it's good. We get official clarification on that. And now Audeville on the attack again. As Mansfield sends it out. Centering pass into the middle. That one momentarily got through. Lease is over there for the big green. Shields. Trying to find, I tried to back heel. It probably would have been better off to drop that one off. He had help from Trentman, but uh, yep. opted to try and, and take it around the corner. But they uh, they also got the throw in, got a couple subs in. Continental's going to bring a sub in. So two subs for Continental, or one sub for Continental, two subs for Ottaville. 
There's the throw in, gets it to Saxton. It will drop it back to Horseman. Horseman turns the corner. Pass forward, and gives it right back to him. The ball into the goal box. Cottonelle going to need clearance. Now that ball going to be knocked out of bounds. There's a big collision there, yeah. and the officials will say play on. And I'm thinking that there was a – I think Stegbauer wants a foul there. There probably could have been a foul there, but, you know, in that situation – that the ball was going to roll out of bounds anyway. You're, yeah, you're so getting there. So whether it's a free kick at the four-yard line or the goal kick at the six, I mean, it doesn't really matter. So I can understand why they did not blow that. That one going to be headed out of bounds by Miller City. Lease to take the throw. Lease is going to be quick with it. Nicely read, though, by Peyton Wilson, but Wilson couldn't hang on to it. Slide tackle getting in to get it to Saxton. Saxton really putting in a lot of work to keep possession with Audeville. And now working with the ball, Kellen Schlogbaum. I thought he was going to turn and hammer it. I thought he was too. I think he saw about three white jerseys <laughs> as he turned and opted not to. And, it, they, you know, give Continental credit on their defense. They just kept pushing him out toward that top of the 18. Just kept pushing him out, and now it's a throw in. Audeville's had a few opportunities with throw-ins in their attacking third this half. That one chested down. Actually, that might have been that shoulder. I think it was that was shoulder. Just talking about. That one sent in and would have rolled wide of the box, but Connor Nip-Williams able to pick it up with some traffic coming. He'll punt it back down the field. He's done a really good job of flipping the field with his punts so far tonight. Yeah, that's one thing that he has vastly improved on from his freshman year um, to now. Big punt there as we have 21.50 remaining in the half. That's going to roll out of bounds. That's going to be a Continental throw. I know Continental fans were looking to get the, the foul called on Lease, but yeah. at least made contact with the ball before really any contact with the body. And a lot of times, unless you're out there, it looks a whole lot worse <laughs> than it actually is. You know? I'm just being honest. Uh, that's fine. It looks a whole lot worse out there than it actually is. And that was one of them where <laughs> you got – basically you got the ball and two kids going after it, get their shoes laces tangled up, stepping on each other, and they both go – one goes down. It, oh, that's a nice pass to the outside. King Continental get the corner. Nicely played there by Horseman to deflect it out of play. But it, here comes a throw in, and they're attacking third now for Continental. They haven't had too many of these opportunities here in the second half. No, and this is one thing where Continental would like to have somebody that could throw it, you know, inside that six, but they just don't have the – I think they got a couple kids on there, but you want them inside the six, so you can't have them in both places. Centering pass for the Pirates finds rail. And the give back initially deflected away. Send it back over to rail. Rail looking to turn the corner right side. Stolen away by Lease. Lease slows it up. And Rail works his way back. And Rail, of course, is going to have to play a little more careful, but no, no harm done on that uh, attack as he is out there with one yellow. Yeah, it's not going to – I don't think it's going to slow him up. No. But, unfortunately, um, he's going right against – Grant Lease, who those two have been going at it, and that, that was the cause of the yellow card. So something to watch for in the last 20. Lease's throw taken away by Continental. The scores in this game, one in the first half for Audeville. And that one the scored by Preston Mansfield with 627 remaining in the first half. The equalizer for Continental came with 30-23 left in the second half. Colin, uh, as it was, uh, pardon me, Colin Davis, who found the back of the net. One of these days I want to work on my handwriting so I can actually read it, Josh. <laughs> I, I gave up. I'm 42 <laughs> years old. It's a lost I gave cause. Up. All yeah. right. Yeah. That was a nice thought while it lasted. Yeah. I mean, if you want to keep working on it, go ahead. Yeah. But I just gave up. I'll take up yoga or something. As he kicked down the field by Nip Williams. Nice job sizing up what was in front of him. Ball deflected around. And we will get a foul. Yep. committed by Audeville here. So now Continental. Now not only is this game important for the league, obviously, but these are teams that could find each other in the tournament as well. Yep. Both of these will go through Kaleida, you know, the Kaleida district. So 
you know, chances are, you know, if both of them went out and seed well, you know, it could be a nice district final, nice rematch. That's a nice chip into the box and headed away. I'll tell you what, the Northwest region in Division Three has some power to yeah. it. <laughs> You've got two uh, Northwest schools in the top ten. Ottaville is tenth. I think Ottawa Hills is up there as well. The, they are a solid program. Yeah, and then you've got Continental is giving the number 10 school in the state all they can handle here yep. tonight. You've got Kaleida who's having a good season. Uh, it's, and, and don't sleep on Riverdale. Yeah, Riverdale's tough this year. You know, Continental's got Riverdale this Saturday night at 6. And uh, next Saturday, the 24th, um, Ottaville's got Riverdale. So if you want to come out of Northwest Ohio this year, you're going to earn it. That's for yes. sure. It's Continental trying to work it down the middle of the field. As Stegmauer, it's just like a locomotive working left to right. Yeah, you're not going to knock him off the ball. Physical presence. There's the cross. That's into the wind. It's going to hang up. Nobody able to make contact initially. Now the Big Green going to send it out of play. That's probably the best possible play there for yes. Ottaville. Quick throw. Ball is headed down. Ottaville to try and send it down the right sideline. That one finds its way into the Continental bench. You know, we've, we've mentioned a couple times, Doug, that this is a very beautiful facility. But where I'm standing, I have this one-foot <laughs> post separating two windows. You asked him if you could move it. I, I did. I asked um, the uh, Ottaville treasurer if I could, you know, get up here and cut this out <laughs> real quick. He, he kind of gave me a dirty look. So, um, <laughs> There's a centering pass. That one is loose in the box. Can Continental get a clearance? No, it's not. Good tackle. There's the shot. That one deflects off of a Continental defender's trail land where it turned to fire. I found a white jersey right there, throwing coming up. I think this will be Audeville's. Yeah, that's I'd, the call from the near side referee. At least wants it. Yeah, I, I think that it went off the least, to be honest with you, though. But VAR unavailable tonight. Yeah, it is. It is unavailable here tonight. Maybe we can get that put in for the <laughs> district girls tournament yeah. here. I'm sure the <laughs> OHSA is really wants to implement instant replay. Yeah. Yeah. Look. I think the shot clock in basketball be uh, better money spent right now <laughs> than VAR. You but well, that's a nice chip down the field, giving chase is Etter. Can Etter get there? Coming all the way out, and getting a foot uh -oh. on it initially. Uh -oh. with Seaver, and that one will be uh, sent behind the net. Bad ang another one of them bad angles yep. where we saw in the first half, uh, Mansfield connected on that bad angle. Um, Etter tried, but I think his momentum was just taking him outside of the pitch and just couldn't yep. get anything on it. And that's completely the difference is Mansfield. The ball was not really moving quite as much. Right. He was able and his angle was taking him at the net. Now there's another steal by Continental. That's going to be a trip. It's going to be outside the box, but this is going to be and a free kick for the Pirates in a very dangerous position. Uh, is he? I think we're going to get yep. a stoppage here and possibly a card. I'm thinking he, uh, he deemed that a goal scoring opportunity. So that's why the card's coming out. Um, that is going. I think that's Jordan Ricker. I'm trying to see a number for you, Doug. I know it's, it's in the 20s. 20. Staring. <laughs> We're staring into the sun now. Oh, wait, no, that's number 20. Pardon me. Landon Horseman. So Landon Horseman going to be called for that. Yep. And this is a dangerous spot for Ottaville. You know, you're 20 yards out. You know, this is you – know, Alex Seaver's going to have to direct that four-man wall where he wants it because Ren Army's on the on the shot. And, you you know, I've, I've watched Ren for four – well, going all the way back to third grade. The kid can put it on frame. So this is very dangerous for Ottaville right now. He'll have his opportunity right here. Seaver has his wall set, a four-man wall. Army, there's the shot. That one going to be over the right side of the goal and out of bounds. Had a little bit of downward momentum yep. on it, but not he enough had... to bring it down and make it dangerous. Nope. 15-17 remains in the contest. 1-1 one, one our score on the JPS Oil Propane scoreboard. 
give a substitution. We'll take a quick timeout back after this on WOSN. And welcome back to Audeville here on WSN, a big Putnam County League soccer matchup taking place. 1-1, Audeville and Connell. Doug Jenkins, Josh Crossgrove with you here for this showdown in the PCL. We've seen one goal in the first half for Audeville, one goal in the second half for Continental. We've seen several opportunities, though, in half number two, Josh. Yes, and a lot of them, you know, Preston Mansfield has been in the box and caused all sorts of havoc for Connor Nip Williams in the Continental defense, but Braxton Stegbauer, the last five, six minutes, Doug, has just it, it controlled the middle of the field. That one played forward. They get it to Slogbaum. Slogbaum nicely played forward as he gets it up. There's the shot. It goes wide across the net. Preston Mansfield again, a presence inside that goal box for Audeville. Slogbaum again leads Audeville and assists. I don't believe he has a shot tonight. No, he does have one shot on goal tonight, but Again, as we said in the pregame, he distributes, too. He has he does. six assists on the season. I believe leads the Big Green in that category as well. That was a well-placed ball. It was. And it's one of those, I think Preston just couldn't get his hips turned all the way around. And it looked a whole lot closer. Yeah. But, but watching Connor Nip's reaction, I don't think it was as close as what we thought it was. Um, but probably for the coaching staff and the Continental fans, it was a little too close for comfort. <laughs> Most definitely. Right oh, that's a nice stick right yeah, there behind midfield. Nice tackle. And Audeville, again, the right idea there. They just didn't have the weight on the pass as they tried to get it back over to Mormon on the give and go. Okay, that didn't work the first time. It worked this time. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how Audeville scored their first goal, a pass back to the goalkeeper that uh, just didn't have enough on it. What do, you, what do you think Coach Stegbauer was thinking right there? <laughs> Don't do this again. <laughs> you better get it there. But you want your guys to be confident and be yeah. able to, to go to that because it's a really good way to get possession back yep. and, it's a, and it's, turn the field. It's a good way to keep the momentum going from one side to the other. The ball rolls out of bounds. Continental will take a throw. We've got another substitution for the Pirates. I'll let you take this one. I can't see the yeah, number yet. Yeah, Carson Etter coming on and uh, Braxton Stegbauer getting a first break for the night. So I don't think that uh, Stegbauer is going to be out long considering how well he's playing in the midfield. But it's a well-timed yeah. uh, with just over 12 to go. It's a well-timed substitution for Coach Stegbauer. Get your breath back. Get a drink of water. Get ready for this final push. This is – Setting up to be a very intense final 10 minutes. Yes, it of is. This contest here in Western Putnam County tonight. That ball going to be deflected out of bounds. Last touched off the Pirates as Bain Steckbauer got a foot on it. Throw in coming. And that's Picker, or Ricker rather, who threw it in. Here comes a throw in Continental. That's, Did that ever come in? It never came in, and uh, Continental's getting a good another 10, 12 yards. There's the throw and sent back out to, to Rail. Rail fires one across the hall. <laughs> a that little one, hot. That was hot, but if it had gotten past one more person, if Quentin Schnipke doesn't touch that, there's someone wide over on the yes. left flank uh, who had that. Schnipke did a nice job, and that one going to be sent far. Can they catch up to it? Yes, they can. Yep. Keeping it in play are the big green. That was Lease up to Slogbomb, Slogbomb. Right back to Mansfield. Mansfield drops it back. Slog Bob looking to get on his right foot. Moving to his right. He's got a player up. Continental looking for clearance. And they're able to take it away. Wow. That's good defense. By I mean, the defense is led by Peyton Wilson and uh, Mason Rail, two juniors. And they, they, pulled, they held their own back there. Yes, they did. Let's take a quick timeout on the substitution. 10.50 remains in the contest. Back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Western Putnam County in Audeville. Doug Jenkins, Josh Crossgrove with you. It's been an exciting one between Audeville, the Big Green, the Pirates of Continental, all knotted up at one apiece, and we're approaching the final 10 minutes of this contest. 
The game's gotten a little bit more physical, a little bit more intense. We've seen some more opportunities here in the last 10 minutes or so. And that last one for Autoville looked really good, but to Continental's credit, they did a good job of their yep. spacing defensively. They just never let Schlagbaum get to a point where he could really turn and fire. Right, and as we approach the 10 minutes left in this 80-minute uh, match, I think we're going to see it ratchet up even another couple notches. So it's going to get interesting here the next 10. Oh, that should be fun. Continental with the ball, left-footed into the center of the field as it finds Colin Davis. But Otteville, back to it. Schlagbaum, one touch back to his right side as he gets to land where. And Continental gonna send this one away. Got a man out there waiting for it. Centering pass. Now the Pirates might have something in the counter. Instead of the right side, too much on that yep. one. And uh, Bain Stegmauer not gonna be able to catch up to that. Throw in, finds its way to Saxton. Saxton in some traffic. I'll tell you what, the conditioning of both these teams is impressive, but Continental's often running three bodies at the ball. Now they get it forward to Mansfield. And Landwehr tries to turn it. And that one's going to be sent away. But the Continental players, and to a large degree, Audeville players, covering a lot of ground. Yes, especially and, the midfield. And somehow not coming out of their position that no. much, but no. And it's a foul on the big green there. And here we go. Inside nine minutes. And one thing as the sun starts to dip <laughs> below the clouds, Doug, is the do on the field because you think about it we've played 70 minutes where yeah. it's pretty much been dry now as you're out there the ball's going to spin a little bit different because the grass is a little bit has a little bit of moisture mm -hmm. on it and you can see the last couple minutes you've had both teams go down a little bit where in the first half they hadn't you know specifically colin davis right there yeah. about a minute ago he went to pivot and you saw a divot fly up that's just because you're starting to get a little bit more dew on that grass right now. So it's something else to be aware of. That's one. If you can put a low skipper at the keeper, that's going to be a good opportunity it for could you. Be that's very tough. dangerous. That ball is going to be caromed out of bounds. 7.49 left in the second half. Both teams trying to find that go ahead goal. There's the throw in. That was nicely put down, but again, nicely defended. And a quick whistle this one. Going to be, I believe, Audeville taking the kick. Yep. I'm, I, I have my post in the way. I could not <laughs> see. I'm, I didn't see contact or, you know, after effects of contact. So I'm guessing maybe handball, but, you know, because of my lovely post that I have here, I don't know. We're just going <laughs> to Josh's post. Uh, yeah. It was a. Uh, Carter Horseman, who came away with the steal before uh, he was fouled there, did a nice job because I don't think if he comes away with that ball, I think Continental had quite an opportunity. Pass through the middle is deflected out. Stegbauer tries to center it. That ball deflected right back to him, trying to turn it to his right. Trying to give and go with Reddick Bowers. No, nope, that's, his, that's his big brother. Oh, yeah, pardon me. Yes, it is. That is his big brother. Otteville knocks this ball back to midfield. Slugbaum comes up with it. Working to his left, finds Lease on the outside. Lease passing to the position, but unable to catch up to it. There was Landwehr. Audeville trying to stretch the field out a little bit. Long drop. Continental kind of hung back. Audeville able to hang on to it momentarily. Now we have a battle for possession at the midfield stripe. And a big stick slows up the Audeville momentum. Pass forward. Slugbaum gets it, fires, and that one is high and to the right. Out of bounds with six minutes remaining. Quick timeout. We are back after this on WOSM. Welcome back into Audeville as the Big Green and the Continental Pirates battle it out in Putnam County League Boys High School Soccer. Doug Jenkins, Josh Crossgrove with you here on WOSN. It's been a very exciting contest, and now we're inside six minutes separating us from the end of this one. Yes, it's been a fantastic soccer match. One goal apiece. 
Um, you know, a miscue on the Continental side, and Colin Davis just took it down the field. And that one's loose in front of the net. Oh that one my. is kicked out of bounds, and I have no idea how that did not find the back of the net, either by a Continental player or through an own goal. Wow. That, that was, was brave by the Ottaville defense to flick it back off the top of the boot. I don't think Bain expected the ball to be there. No. To be honest, just by his reaction, I do not think he expected that ball to be there. So the last couple minutes, Continental's made a significant push to try and get that game-winning goal. Uh-oh, that one got through, but Continental retreating. They're able to send that one over to the far side of the field. And now the Pirates with some momentum trying to find the go-ahead goal. That one shipped forward. Big Green able to send it away. That pass got long, though. And coming up with it was Army. Army gets the right side. There's the shot, and that one right that, into the hands of Alex Seaver. That was one that you talked about, though, the low skip. Go low. You know. And the, you know, I don't want to get, take any credit away from Bain, but, you know, he that was a freshman kick. Yeah. You know, just didn't have as much oomph on it as you. Audeville going to go down the field in a hurry. Continental can't get a good clear. And that one headed out of bounds. Last touched off of a pirate. Lee's going to have a throw. He's got a good throw from this distance in their attacking third inside four minutes. Well, Slugbomb's going to wave him off. Slugbomb yep. places it pretty well on his throw, yeah. too. And you're going to see Lee go stand right next to the keeper. Yes, he is. Fortunately for Nip Williams, you can see pretty much right over him. Nip Williams got knocked down. Yep. That he took. Yeah. He took uh, Connor yeah. out, unfortunately. Nip Williams going to. That take his time. Stegbauer. And they're going to stop the clock there I'm, with 328 remaining. I, you know, some people might consider this a homer, but I'm unfortunately I'm thinking that you got to protect the keeper there, and when you take him out like that, there's Stegbauer is wanting a card. Yes, he definitely he is, is protesting for the card. So both both him and Dalton. Are the JB coach and the varsity coach are both wanting a card? And I think, and I think they got a beef. Unfortunately, I think they do have a beef. But now, unfortunately, with the clock stopped, um, Connor's got to come out. That's a good point. And also, Steckbauer is holding his arm, his left arm, a little bit. He's up and okay. Tell you what, as they sort this out, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back as we get back to the action with 328 remaining here in the second half. We're all square back after this on WOSN. Well, back. Welcome back to Ottaville and this one coming down to the last minutes. Right now, it looks like Connor Nip Williams is shaken up after he got knocked down on that throw-in opportunity. Uh, there was a penalty called against Ottaville. Of course, Coach Brian Stegbauer was looking for the card. And I, I'm, again, keeper parent, so I'm probably going to agree with you here <laughs> on that one. Yeah. I, but that's, I mean, that's the rule. You just can't knock the keeper down when he goes up from it, especially. Right. You know, he, you know he's, he's unprotected. Yeah, there's. Not that there was intent to knock no. the keeper down by any means, but that's just one of those rules for safety that, that are there. But nine times out of ten, do you intend to foul? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's I, a good point. I, I, I get a lot of it. Yes. Yeah. You know, you, you a, a, a attempt to knock him off the ball, but attempt to foul, I don't yeah. think you ever do. That one is headed to the box, set down. Continental looking for clearance. Got a couple of bodies down in yep. the back, but now that one's going to be stolen away. And that one finds its way. It looks like it was going to be pushed right of the goal box. Connor Nip Williams comes up to get it. He immediately releases it downfield. Doesn't really have the numbers there, but he's able to really decompress the field. He's been under attack here the last couple of minutes. Yeah, sometimes you just want to get it, get it out. So long pass. The wind held that one up, kept it in bounds for Continental. But there's a steal. Ball skips free. Audeville. With some room to work on the right side, that one chipped forward. Slugbomb 
Powering forward, Lease is in the vicinity. Lease will get there first. Continental sends it out of bounds. Throw in coming in, Audeville. Nearly the identical situation we had on this last throw, yep. except for 210 remaining now. And here we go. Grant Lease gives way to Schlagbaum, and Grant Lease. Oh, there's the throw in. Two minutes. Two minutes. Connor Williams, and I think a little gamesmanship backfired as Lease. Trying to get around a player bumped into a Continental player. He yeah. went down and that took himself out of the play. Yeah. I think he was trying to get a call there, but. Did not. And no, now it's Audeville with the Mike. ball, though. Schlagbaum sets it down. And Continental able to boot that one away. I oh, mean, that's the player you they want said, with the, in the right position. They said a deflection. Oh, yes, they did. So Continental has got the throw in. Audeville has all ten players. Minus the keeper pushed across midfield right now as they try and make a final push here at the minute 19. Both of them are going to push hard the next minute. 1-1 one, one on the JPS Oil Propane scoreboard. And even though this one is drawing into its closing seconds, you still feel like there might be a goal out there, Josh. Yeah. You just chip How forward. the tide can turn so quickly. And now sent to the outside. Left foot played forward, 52 seconds. And the back four for Audeville come away with it. But as they send it forward, it found a white jersey over to the left sideline. The Pirates now on their attacking half of the field. Don't have the numbers just yet. And yeah, that's a good tackle. And we've got a Continental player down. I get Stegbauer, he's getting up slowly. Looks like he's all right, but yep. hasn't reestablished himself back on side. Lee's nice left foot into the goal box, but well played by Connor Nip Williams who came up to get that one. We're down to 22 seconds left. We know that Nip Williams can flip the field in a hurry. He does. That one has to move movement to the right side. Going to stay in bounds, though, trying to jockey away in front of it. And that one was bumped out of bounds by Audeville. Here comes the throw as they get it to Rail. Rail, pass over to the left side. And that one be set away by Audeville. That is going to do it for the ball game. And this one will end in a draw. One for Audeville, one for Continental. What a battle here tonight at Audeville's wow. Athletic Complex. Wow. To be honest with you, Doug, coming into this game um, with, the, with the way Audeville was playing and with the way Continental was playing, um, I, I think Continental's got to walk away with some confidence that they Absolutely. can hold their own after losing against Miller City. Um, one nothing. Um, in their first league game. And Ottaville, you know, being the 10th team in the state, um, th to go up against their arch rival and come out with a draw, you know, if you say win-lose, you know, Cottonell comes away with some confidence. Ottaville comes away with maybe a few things to work on, especially being able to finish inside the box. Yeah. But looking at the long-term picture, we're here – September 13th on a Tuesday night, okay? We got a long season to go. And these two teams, if they continue to play the way that they just played, the way that they that we just witnessed, you know, obviously Kaleida comes into play, Miller City comes into play, but at the well, they could very well see each other in Kaleida. Oh, most definitely. At the district level, whether district semifinals or district finals. And boy, would that be a whale of a game. But yeah, absolutely. The way that this was contested, you get some more experience under your belt. And uh, I'd, I would like to see this one run back uh, yeah. in, in some way, shape, or form. It was an entertaining soccer game here tonight. Final stats, the goals belong to uh, Mansfield. That was Preston Mansfield who scored with 627 remaining in the first half for the Audeville goal. Continental's goal came with 30-23 remaining in the second half. Colin Davis finds the back of the net. So both goals unassisted. And as far as saves went, Connor Nip Williams, big night for him. He finishes with nine saves. Alex Seaver nearly doubled his total on the year. <laughs> he had three saves wow. uh, tonight. He had four coming into the contest. But Continental really put some pressure on him. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the keeper came up big for the big green. You know, and one final comment on as far as Alex Seaver goes – you know, something to take away for Coach Markward was that he was tested tonight. Yes, he let one goal in, um, but he was he got some tests tonight. Yeah. So you can kind of see what you're going to get, especially when, you know, you got Wasion coming to town uh, yeah. Saturday. You got Riverdale. 
you know those two teams, if you're Northwest Ohio, you know that those two teams are going to bring it. Yes. So it's good to get some tests here tonight, and it's always good to come away with at least a draw in the PCL. You feel like it's a win. Absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah. I, you know, people people might knock draws, but the way this was contested, I think, like, like you said, you take away uh, a lot from both teams, a, a lot of positives, some things to work on. Uh, you learned a lot after this contest tonight. Yep. Yep. All right. With that said, we'll take a timeout. Back to wrap things up after this on WOSN. Wrapping things up from Audeville, Doug Jenkins joining you with the goal scores in today's game. It ended up in a one-all draw scoring for Audeville. Preston Mansfield to my right, or to my left. I knew I was going to screw up my directions at some point. To my right, we've got Colin Davis, who scored the equalizer in the second half. Boys, first of all, that was a very hard, con hard contested game. Congratulations to you both on, on what I think we'd all like to see run back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, let's get to the questions. Let's talk about the first half goal, Preston. Uh, the ball, not the proper weight on it, back to the keeper. How big did your eyes get as you came around to attack? Oh, my eyes definitely got big. You know, I, I saw Peyton play it back, and I had to capitalize on it. Got the ball dribbled and put it in the back of the net. Let's talk about the equalizer then in the second half, and uh, the opportunity came to you. Obviously, both teams ratcheting up the pressure a little bit as that second half began. To get it early, what did that mean to you guys? Well, I thought we had a chance to score again, but... I just saw I had one man to beat, so I made a move and dribbled up and shot. But it sucks we couldn't get another, I guess. <laughs> the draw's always tough to come by. I think uh, especially for the players is the fans, though, certainly appreciate the effort that was on the field. What was the message from your coaches after the game, after a contest like that? Um, you know, you always look to win, but he said we played hard and we'll be ready in tournaments. Likewise, on the Audeville side, what were, what were the thoughts afterwards? It was definitely a setback, but um, we're going to come back stronger and we're going to play better. All right. Well, we would all be interested in seeing this again uh, over in Kaleida, so always a possibility. Boys, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, and that's going to do it for our coverage of Putnam County League Soccer. For Josh Crossgrove, I'm Doug Jenkins. Thanks for tuning in here on WOSN.